Francafrique French pronunciation, F. Safik, is France's relationship with its former African colonies. It was first used in a positive sense by President Félix Hopehoué Boigny of Côte d'Ivoire, in allusion to that country's economic growth and political stability under its alliance with France. However, the term is now often used to criticize the allegedly neocolonial relationship France has with its former colonies in Africa. Since the independence of African states in 1960, France has intervened militarily more than 30 times in the continent. France has military bases in Gabon, Senegal and Djibouti, as well as in its overseas departments of Mayotte and Réunion in the Indian Ocean. The French army is also deployed in Mali, Chad, Central African Republic, Somalia and Ivory Coast. Francafrique was at its height from 1960 to 1989, and there is an ongoing dispute as to whether or not it still exists. In 2012 and 2013, some news outlets spoke of a return of Francafrique. On the 14th of July 2013, troops from 13 African countries marched with the French military during the Bastille Day parade in Paris for the first time since French colonial troops were dissolved. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Definition of the concept. Topic. Origin of the expression The term, Francafrique, seems to have been used for the first time, in a positive sense, in 1955 by President Félix Hopehoué Boigny of Côte d'Ivoire, who advocated maintaining a close relationship with France, while acceding to independence. Close cooperation between Hopehoué Boigny and Jacques Fouquet, chief advisor on African policy in the Charles de Gaulle and Georges Pompidou governments (1958–1974) is thought to have contributed to the Ivorian miracle of economic and industrial progress. The term was subsequently borrowed by François Xavier Verchave as the title of his 1999 criticism of French policies in Africa, Le Francafrique, Le Plus Long Scandale de la République, ISBN 2-234-04948-2. Verschave and the Association Servi, of which he was president until his death in 2005, reused the expression of Hopehoué Boigny to name and denounce the many concealed bonds between France and Africa. He later defined Francafrique as the secret criminality in the upper echelons of French politics and economy, where a kind of underground republic is hidden from view. He said that it also means France a fric. Frick is a slang word for cash, and that over the course of four decades, hundreds of thousands of euros misappropriated from debt, aid, oil, and cocoa or drained through French importing monopolies, have financed French political business networks, all of them offshoots of the main neo Gaullist network, shareholders' dividends, the secret service's major operations, and mercenary expeditions. Topic. Historical context When French President Charles de Gaulle came back into power in 1958, anti-colonization movements and other international forces pressured France to give independence to the French colonies in Africa except Algeria, whose status was separate. In the meantime de Gaulle put Jacques Fouquet, one of his close friends, in charge of maintaining a de facto dependency. Therefore, from 1960 to 1974, Jacques Fouquet held the function of chief advisor to the government of France on African policy. He was re-selected in 1986 by the new Prime Minister, Jacques Chirac, for two years. When Chirac gained the presidency in 1995 Fouquet was brought back again to the Élysée Palace as an advisor. Until his death Fouquet never stopped being influential in French-African diplomatic relations, and it is commonly considered that he and de Gaulle were the founding fathers of the neo-colonial relationship between France and Africa. Throughout successive French governments until Sarkozy, defense of the African backyard, despite the evolution of forms and methods, has always remained a high strategic imperative. Initially, the Francafrique 
Policy was motivated by three strategic concerns economic provided and secured access to strategic raw materials oil, uranium, etc. and offered preferential investment outlets for French multinational companies. Several French African agreements gave France exclusive monopoly rights to natural resources, as mentioned in the United States diplomatic cables leak many years later. Diplomatic maintained the declining status of France as a global powerhouse with a network of ally countries supporting the French vote in international institutions. Political—deterred the communist expansion in Africa by backing anti-communist regimes as well as increasing the presence of French military bases on the continent. Countries concerned. Francafrique includes all of French-speaking Africa, i.e. former French and Belgian colonies in Africa, Togo, Republic of the Congo, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Rwanda, Senegal, Côte d'Ivoire, Cameroon, Burundi, Chad, Comoros, Gabon, Burkina Faso, Madagascar, Benin, Tunisia, Morocco, Guinea, Niger, Djibouti, Mali, Central African Republic, Mauritania, Algeria, and also other countries like Equatorial Guinea, where France gained influence after its independence from Spain. Not all countries are affected by Francafrique to the same extent. Petroleum dictatorships like Gabon and the Democratic Republic of Congo are the archetypes of Francafrique. In such countries, the relationships between the leaders and the French authorities are very closely knit, given the prevalence of the total group in the economy. The situation is similar in other autocratic countries like Togo, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Chad and the Central African Republic. On the other hand, in other former colonies like the Maghreb countries or the Côte d'Ivoire, which had had a conflict relationship with France in the past, the French influence and networks are much less evident than in the countries mentioned above, even if the economic aspect shares some similarities with the practices of Francafrique. Lastly, democratic countries like Mali and Senegal are less concerned by this phenomenon, for both economic and historical reasons. Topic. Framework Topic. Elysee's Africa Cell France's African policy has always been directed separately from the French Foreign Ministry. It is managed from the Elysee Palace, seat of the French Presidency. More precisely, French policy on Africa is managed from the Elysee's Africa cell at 2 Rue de l'Elysee, Paris, where the President and his advisers make decisions on military support for African countries or for their ruling governments. The Africa Group's founding father Jacques Fockett was appointed by President Charles de Gaulle and after that became a specialist on African matters at the Elysee Palace. Between 1986 and 1992, Jean-Christophe Mitterrand, the son of President François Mitterrand and a former AFP journalist in Africa, held the position of Chief Advisor on African Policy at the Elysee African Cell, which got him nicknamed, Papa Mardi, translated as, Daddy Told Me, and replaced it with just a diplomatic advisor on Africa but the difference in titles was only symbolic. The new mentor on African matters at the Elysee is General Secretary Claude Guéant, a close aide to the President. <laughs> Underground diplomacy The French consular network in Africa is extensive, although this is also generally the case in many other regions worldwide. France has the second most extensive consular network worldwide after the US. But the Francafrique is more a matter of concealed networks and unofficial emissaries rather than a matter of official diplomacy. Around the official representative of the French interests, there is also a maze of power consisting of political leaders, businessmen, intelligence agents, and military corps or mercenaries. 
Many players have combined official and unofficial activities, for example, Morris Robert, a former intelligence agent who became the chief executive of SDECE, the French External Documentation and Counter Espionage Service, formerly the DGSE, General Directorate for External Security in Africa. In the ambit of his new appointment, he led many military actions in Africa, helping or deposing heads of state in accordance with French interests in these countries. More particularly, he supervised operations for the notorious mercenary Bob Denard. In 1973, he was pushed aside from the intelligence services and then directly employed by the petroleum company ELF. In 1979, he was appointed French ambassador to Gabon, on the demand of President Omar Bongo of Gabon, whom he had helped to take power. In 1982, he went back to ELF where he finished his career before retirement, another of the most active unofficial intermediaries of the Francafrique is the Franco-Lebanese lawyer Robert Berge, close aide to the Bongo family and to many other African leaders, and also an informal advisor to President Nicolas Sarkozy. Robert Berge admitted that he supplanted the Secretary of State for Overseas Development, Jean-Marie Bockel. Bockel wanted to break away from the Francafrique. And in response to a question from a journalist from Le Monde in January 2008, he said that he wanted to sign the death certificate of Francafrique. This displeased the African dictators, who preferred to address Robert Berge as an intermediary. In 2009, Berge, on behalf of the French government, supported the presidential election of Ali Bongo Ondimba, son of former President Omar Bongo. <laughs> <laughs> development aid French development aid in Africa is based on two organizations, the AFD French Development Agency which handles government-to-government -government funding, and PROPARCO Promotion and Participation for Economic Cooperation, a subsidiary of the AFD which funds the private sector in developing countries. Today The Francafrique policy came under the spotlight once more after the January 2010 attacks on Togo's national football team. France has been accused of meddling in Angolan affairs by backing of separatist groups such as Front for the Liberation of the Enclave of Cabinda and harboring their leaders. In 2010, the presidents of France's former colonies in Africa were invited for lunch at the Elysee Palace with then President Nicolas Sarkozy. The invitation had brought a lot of criticism. Although Sarkozy had promised pension benefits to every former soldier in France's African colonies, the French Association survey felt that the French government was still looking out for its own benefits. President François Hollande likewise maintained the promise of the previous Elysee government to end Francafrique. However, Hollande authorized military interventions in Mali, the Central African Republic and Chad, which was a departure from the previous government's policy of disengagement in Africa and a rapprochement toward Francafrique. In February 2015, France launched Africa France, a foundation headed by Lionel Zinso and endorsed by the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs to relaunch the relationship between France and Africa. Topic. Quotations about Francafrique Omar Bongo, former president of Gabon. Gabon without France is like a car with no driver. France without Gabon is like a car with no fuel. The 18th of September 1996 reported during an interview for the newspaper Liberation, François Mitterrand, then the French Minister of the Interior. Without Africa, France will have no history in the 21st century. 1957. Jacques Godfrain, former French Foreign Minister. A little country, France, with a small amount of strength, we can move a planet because of our relations with 15 or 20 African countries. Topic. See also 
France Africa Relations documentary The French African Connection 2013 three part documentary series by Al Jazeera Film Frank Afrique documentaire movie by Patrick Benke 2010 Le Professional action movie by Georges Lautner 1981 Fratricide in Burkina, Thomas Sinkara and French Africa, movie by Didier Mauro and Thuy Tien Ho 2008 music Frank Afrique, album and song by Tycan Jar Fakali Pompafric, song by Trio Frank Afrique, song by Refused Literature M. M. E. Barr, novel by Eric Orsena 2003.